Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, Lord, that you've made. We thank you for everyone here, Lord, and we just pray that we would surrender to your will this morning, that we would have ears to hear, and eyes to see, and a heart to, to sense, Lord, be filled with your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would bless and protect the missionaries overseas in harm's way right now, Lord, and we pray that for mm-hmm. our local brothers and sisters in town, Lord, not just at uh, Calvary Chapel, West Hawaii, but all around town and on the island, and on the state, Lord, and around this world, Lord, we just pray that that the f- you said the fields are white for harvest, Lord, so we pray, Lord, that you would have your way with us, Lord, that we would be those workers that would go out and help help uh, bring in the harvest. And we pray now that you would uh, bless the speaker this morning. We're especially privileged to, to have Pastor Mike Kessler here this morning. We just ask you to bless this time now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before I bring up Pastor Mike, I just quick one more announcement. Uh, for those of you that didn't hear, Auntie Dot, who was on our worship team and part of our fellowship for... I don't know how many years, 15 years? As old as Daniel. 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 Daniel's what, 22? Okay, time flies when you get older like me. It's my birthday. (laughs) At 55, I just lost it. So 22 years, Auntie Dot's been, she was my volunteer secretary. One day she comes to me and goes, with a blank piece of paper, sign your name. And I'm like, what? And she goes, sign your name. And, uh, And she took it and she went to some printer and she had them print a little, a little rubber stamp with my signature so that she could write birthday cards to all of you when it was your birthday. And she kept track of everybody's birthday. And she would call them or she would write them a card. How many of you got a card from Auntie Dot over the years? I mean, this lady, she, she would write them. And then she stamped my name like I wrote it. That made me look really good. But, um, except I didn't know that I had sent out the card. So when I got a call thanking me for sending a card, I was like, oh, you're welcome. What did I write? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but Dot always loved all of you. And Friday morning, uh, about a quarter to six, she went to be with Jesus, and she asked him. Um, it's kind of hard on on uh, Thursday night. I got a call from hospice, and they said, "Would you come up uh, or or just consider coming?" It's and we know it's really late, um, but she's not looking good, and or come really early in the morning. And and I prayed, and the Lord said, "You just I had just." changed i had been taking pastor mike around and i i had been wearing my nice clothes and i just took them off put on some shorts and they called and i'm like okay forget it switch back i'm going i'm coming i knew the lord you ever had that feeling inside my kids asked me how do you know when god's leading you I said, it's not a like a loud voice it's an impression his spirit was saying go now don't wait and i'm so glad i listened as i went up there and Dottie was there and she was having a hard time. Uh, her eyes were kind of like stuck shut. Her mouth, you could see, was very dry, and her lips and, and her face, and she was just having a hard time breathing. And so I asked uh, his, uh, her son, Bill, was there, and his wife, and her wishes was that none of you would see her like that. So if you don't have hurt feelings that you weren't called, she was a very private person in this way. Um, she, would, she would not have wanted you to remember her like that. But I was able to sponge her off and, and read to her the, the part we just studied. In, the part I read to my grandfather when he was dying. That though this outer man is decaying, what's happening on the inner man? It's being renewed day by day. And that we get to trade in this tent for a mansion made by God. So I, I read her that whole part from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through chapter 5, verse 10. And the whole time, even though she couldn't, speak she was grunting to me and she kept trying to pull her arm out of the uh, under the covers and <laughs> and her daughter-in-law kept covering her arm back up and thinking you know oh she's going to be cold or something and she kept trying to get her arm out and finally she I, I go just leave it just I think she's trying to do and she got her arm out and she reached over and grabbed my hand so I held her hand and I read her the scriptures and I witnessed to her son and to her daughter-in-law about about that new body because they they're not believers and so it was a great time. You know, people's wall goes down when they're watching their loved one get ready to leave. And there was Dot in such peace. And I looked at him. I said, guys, I, I, you know, 
I don't know if you call it occupational hazard or, or experience or whatever, but being bedside with many people over the years. I just, I just realized because of you, I was thinking when I came to Christ, it's 1979 of February. So next, this coming February will be my 40 years in Christ. And I got the privilege of starting off right away. I got kicked right into the ministry as a youth leader. And the pastor who mentored me, Pastor John Higgins, would drag me to all the visits. Come on, we're going to go visit this auntie. She's dying. And I had been bedside when someone sat there. This one auntie looked at me and said, she's talking and she goes, she, hold on just a minute. And she goes, I'll be right with you guys. And, and we're like, who are you talking to? And she goes, oh, can't you see the two bright guys in, in white sit right at the end of the bed? They're ready to take me home. And I, I'm getting chicken skin. I'm looking. And I look back at the pastor because I'm the one sitting close to her. And she's just sitting there going, now life is too short to hold unforgiveness. Just remember this. Don't learn from my mistakes. And then she goes, you got that? And I'm like, yes, auntie. And she goes, good. And she looked at the gentleman and goes, okay. And she closed her eyes and breathed her last breath. And I had my hand on her, on her wrist and felt, felt her leave this earth. And I was just like, oh. that stuck with me. Like, that was one of my early intros. And I looked at Dot and I told her son, I know she won't make it through the night. <coughs> you know, she can, I mean, if she, if she makes it 24 hours, it'll be a miracle. So if she should happen to grunt at you or try to rally, sometimes they rally right before they go and they say something, I want you to just run over and tell her you love her. And tell her, don't stick around. <laughs> don't try to fight and stay here. You know, your husband's in heaven, Bill. Go be with him and dance. And I, you know, I remind her, you know, in heaven we get to dance and, and, and sing for joy and there's no pain. If you don't know about these things, these are the things of the hope of the faith that we have. We get a new body from God no more pain, no more sorrow. And so what a blessing to, to get a call at quarter to six and know that she got to go be with Jesus. So although my heart's heavy and I lost my volunteer receptionist, someone else wants the pad, I got it, the little stamper. You can take over mailing. Um, see me after. But, um, but I'm really grateful for, for Dot because she doesn't have to suffer anymore. She's, she'd been suffering for about a year. And so it's nice to know that's the hope of our faith. Once we're done, some glad morning, when this life is over, what are we going to do? Fly away. Now, who wrote that? Psalm, yep, Moses. One of the only psalms we have from Moses, Psalm 90, verses 10 to 12 there. So Moses wrote that for us. Someday we get to fly away. Now, until that day, there's some beautiful, precious words of hope in the Scripture. And I want to introduce Pastor Mike Kessler, who I've I had never seen him in real life until just just this week, but I've heard this guy for about 30 years, and, uh, and we labored together through the, through the old days of writing mail to the you know, FCC, putting in these applications for radio stations. So we started doing that in 92, 93, Three. and we went from 93, it took nine years to get all of the stations across the islands for the CSN and the Effect Radio. And this is the man that was backing me behind, on the mainland that was, you know, like helping me do all the paperwork to submit to them, and then give it back, and then I'd give it back to him, and it was in the days before faxing and all that. We were just mail, 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 mail. But we got it done. And now I get to hear him all, all the time onto Every Man and Answer. And uh, how many of you have heard that Every Man and Answer show? See? Whoa, yeah. Okay, but I don't even need to introduce you. Come up here. Everybody knows you now. Thank you. Welcome, Mike Kessler, guys. Let's get into the Word. Grab your Bibles, guys, and turn wherever he says to it's turn. A, it's a blessing to be with everybody here today. And uh, I'm always, uh, always uh, uh, so, so blessed when I get to come to Hawaii, and especially with fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. And, you know, I was um, telling my wife, I said, you know, it's really amazing, this digitized backdrop he has here and how they digitize that rock in there <laughs> it looks so real and so i i really like that but uh no i wanted to come here for izzy's birthday and uh, be with him because it's such a blessing to be with him now izzy if you were in north dakota i probably sent you a card but <laughs> but uh, being being we're here it's 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 good you know uh this morning and and i realized that where i don't 
and I can't get into an in-depth study with all of you, but there are some in-depth things that all of us need. And if you have your Bible this morning, I'd like you to open them to the book of Matthew, and we're going to be looking is in verse 44, Matthew 13, 44. I'm going to talk about if that. If you need a Bible, raise your hand. Like yeah, if you don't I have, have a Bible, lectures, can't do much damage table. without a sword. Yep. Just raise your hand, and Daniel, would you grab some Bibles if anyone? Yeah, needs? if you got a New Testament, you've got a pocket knife; those work too. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got Bibles right here. Uh, oh, Robbie's got it. Good. There's lots of things. So like raise that. your hand if you need one, guys, and uh, we'll make sure that everyone can follow. When along. I got off the plane, they, uh, I, I walked up to this uh, person from here, and I, I said, "I just need to ask you: Do you say Hawaii or do you say Hawaii?" Hawaii. And he goes, "Hawaii," and I said. Thank you. And he goes, you're welcome. And I, so I, I, I felt good about, I felt good that I, I learned that. Um, and uh, earlier today, when we got here earlier, I was walking down the beach and I, I saw this bottle rolling back and forth in the water. And I thought, hey, that's something you don't see every day. So I grabbed it and I looked at it and I pulled the cork out and this genie comes out and says, I, you know, I've been in that bottle for so long, I want to grant you a wish. And I said, really, that's great. You know, I hate flying. I love Hawaii. I'd like a road from here to the mainland. And the genie looks at me and says, you know, how much that would cost to build a road from the big island to the mainland? Ask for something else. And I, 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 I'd like to understand my wife. I'd like to understand women. And the genie turns around and looks at me and says, do you want a two-lane or a four-lane? <laughs> well, one of the things we do, by the way, I made that up. Uh, so anyway, let's pray. Father, as we go to your word this morning, I pray that you would remind every one of us how valuable we are to you. Mm -hmm. And Lord, that through this time that we have, in just a few minutes out of a week, that we can once again realign our purposes to yours. And so, Father, now as we read, may your Holy Spirit come and, and, and remind every one of us, God, who you are, and that you would continually remind us throughout our entire life that you love us, and nothing happens to us by accident. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, one of the things that we all need is you need faith. In fact, it was said one time, there's three things you need to live. A self to live with, a reason to live for, and a faith to live by. Now, what does that mean? Simply this, a self you can live with. What does that mean? Well, that's why people kill themselves. They jump off bridges. They jump out of high-rise buildings. It isn't because they have a lot of money or no money. It's there's something wrong inside. They don't have a self that they can live with. The second thing is a reason to live for. What lights your fire? What causes you to get out of bed in the morning? What causes you to, to put your shoes on and your pants on and go out and do whatever it is that you do? The third thing we need is a faith to live by. In other words, what is the code that you live? Years ago, Crosby, Steele, Nash & Young sang a song, the, the, the Code You Must Live By. And I think about that a lot because everybody has an idea of what life is. And the problem is, if we believe wrong, if we think wrong, we will live wrong. You ask somebody, if you had a wish, maybe you make up a genie in a bottle down the beach here. Genie pops out and says, what do you want? Well, I want a million dollars or... Well, that's not very much money anymore. It is still to me. But in some people's world, I want a billion dollars. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, I want a billion dollars. Well, the thing is, money doesn't solve your problems. If you've got terminal cancer, you can have all the money in the world. It isn't going to fix your problem. If you've got a broken heart, if you're here this morning and you have a broken heart, money is not what fixes your problem. And when we stop to think about these things, Money isn't the cure-all for everything, and so often people think it is. And what you believe is how you live your life. Now, again, you need to have your life defined by something. I remember one time I was talking to a group of people, and some guy yelled out of the crowd. He said, you mean to tell me you believe you base your life upon everything the Bible says? And I said, well, by the nature of your question, you base your life upon something. What do you base your life on? 
You see, we all have some kind of an idea of how we need to live life. Well, uh, understanding this, as we look at this this morning, God's value of you. Now, again, I don't know how our generation went from a, from a generation of telephoto lenses to selfies, but that's where we're at. You go into the store, you see magazines, self, me, I, and you go, that's kind of weird. But anyway, it is weird because all of a sudden, the focus has gone from others now to ourselves. You want to know what's wrong with your country? You want to know what's wrong with, with our society? Have you ever been out to a restaurant? And you'll see two people sitting across. You know, the waiter comes up and they're inconvenienced by the waiter as they have to lay their iPhones down because you have two people on a date, but nobody's talking. They're just sitting there texting. Maybe they're on eBay. I want that. And they're doing this. We don't know how to communicate anymore. You know, Paul tells us, and to communicate, forget not. The problem is we don't know how to communicate. How do we learn how to communicate? Well, I believe that comes from God. You see, God is the one who made you. He knows everything about you. You're not a cosmic accident. Lightning didn't hit a swamp. A bunch of squiggly things started moving around. They grew fins. The fins fell off. They grew legs. They crawled out on dry land, grew a bunch of hair, shaved all their hair off, and became truck drivers. No, that's not how we got here. But yet, that's what people are taught in school. You're taught that you are a cosmic accident by some random event, throwing a couple billion years in there, here we all are. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting when you really examine that, and you get into uh, a lot of the different established laws, not evolution. Now, evolution is a faith. It's a religion. Because again, you have too many missing links. And so, uh, and by the way, one of the, uh, the, the uh, DVDs we give away, it's available online for free if you guys would ever want to check it out. Uh, it's called Evolution Versus God. And um, Ray Comfort is the one who did this. And I've done the radio show with him several times. But uh, he goes on the campus of UCLA, USC. And he went and talked to the people who teach evolution. And he said, I got a couple of questions for you. And they said, what? And he goes, well, I want to know where are the transitory life forms? In other words, cats turning into dogs, uh, horses turning into giraffes. And they say, well, there aren't any. Well, okay, well, what's the, where's the fossil records of any such transitory life forms? There aren't any. Isn't that funny? Going back to the book of Genesis, it says everything reproduced after its own kind is called DNA. And we know that if DNA is crossed, like you cross a donkey, with a horse, you get a mule. But you know what the mule is? It's sterile. So here's the problem. There is no transitory life forms living. There are no transitory life forms that are dead in the fossil records. So then you have to go back to an element of faith. Now again, the good thing is, if you believe in God, you believe in the Bible, and Jesus quoted more from the book of Genesis than any other book giving it great credibility if you believe in creation, your root of your faith is God. But if your root faith is in evolution, your God is dirt. So you've got a problem here. How you believe, what you believe, is how you live your life. Now here's the problem. If you are a cosmic mistake, there really is no hope. There is really nothing that's going to catapult you in this life into the next life, and you just pray and hope every night, even though you're, what was that old song by, that uh, no, wasn't Three Dog Night, I swear there is no heaven and I pray there ain't no hell. That's some good theology, ain't it? And you look at that and you go, wow, what in the world is that about? Well, let's look at this. Father, as we read your word, anoint it again, in Jesus' name, amen. By the way, the Holy Spirit wrote this book. It takes the Holy Spirit to cause it to go into your heart. People have said, well, I tried reading the Bible and it looks like a phone book. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. It's because it's written after the Spirit. And so when you read, always pray. Ask God, God, you know, show me something new in your word. The Bible says God's word is alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, the Hebrews actually believe that even though it doesn't have blood vessels and corpuscles and all that, the Bible is alive as much as any one of us sitting under this tent today. 
Because God's Word is alive. That's why you'll read something one time, and God will speak to you in a different way the next time you read it. That's why God does that. And so when we understand that, we see then what God wants to communicate to our hearts. So let's look at this, verse 44. Again. <laughs> you know, when you start off a verse with again, that tells me one of two things. Either Jesus is trying to be repetitious, or you didn't get it the first time. Again. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for the joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. You know, many times I always thought about this as being, well, you know, I was walking through this world and I found Jesus, and I gave up everything I have to follow him. That sounds good, but that's really not what this says. The truth of the matter is, the field is the world. You, me, were the treasure. And Jesus gave up all the worship of heaven, all the worship of heaven, to come to be born in a dirty manger. And by the way, I know at Christmas time, coming up here in about six, seven weeks, something like that, we got to Christmas coming and we have all these little sanitized mangers. The wise men showing up in their Uber taxis. They're all showing up there, and it all looks so clean. Well, let me tell you something. Mangers were dirty. They were in barns. They sunk, and this is where the king of the world was born. Now, I like that. Through Jesus' birth, he never intimidated one person by his birth. And by the way, that's important because sometimes we get intimidated by around people who, who have more than we do. Oh, well, that person, look at the kind of car they drive. You know, they were intimidated. But Jesus never intimidated anyone by the way he was born. I like that. And he lived, lived a sinless life so that we could put on his righteousness and go to heaven again. We never, none of us ever go to heaven because you're good. I've had people say that to me. Say, well, I'm not good enough to go to heaven. Hey, you're pretty close to the kingdom, bud. What do you mean? When you first realize that, you, that's the first step. We never approach God in our righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness is filthy rags. And as a matter of fact, any faith you have, I can't say, well, you know, you need to have more faith and claim that Americanus Maximus with Erico and tinted glass. I don't know what God wants for me in my life. You know, I've always often wondered about these people that are out claiming their new refrigerators and all this kind of stuff. You don't know that God might call you to be a foreign missionary. What, car, what good is a big old Americanus Maximus going to be in a jungle? It doesn't. See, this is what's important. Jesus, going through the field, saw treasure. But where was the treasure? Anybody catch on here? It was buried in the dirt. Where does God find us? buried in the dirt. The dirt of this world. Now some are more dirty than others. I have been more dirty at different times than others. I remember one time I changed the oil on my transmission on my truck. I took the drain plug out of the transmission, drained the oil. I thought that was pretty good. Slid the pan out. I was doing good. Started putting new oil in. Realized that I didn't put the drain plug back. <laughs> And so I had to crawl, I had to slide on my back in the oil to put the drain plug back in. I was really dirty that day. But you know, it doesn't matter how good you think you are, or less dirty you think you might be, or how dirty you may really know you are. The Bible says God forgives us. Now notice, it says, kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. That would be you. Which a man, speaking of Jesus, found and hid. By the way, according to Levitical law and according to uh, that, if you, you could not extract something out of somebody else's field unless you owned it. So he found it, left it where it was at, goes and pays the price, dies on the cross for us, comes back, redeems the field, and redeems us. Did God want the field? Well, not really. What he wanted was you and me. That puts great value on you. Another question here. How do you see yourself? See, if you see yourself as a loser, by the way, the devil's great at doing that. He will throw your past in your face continually. 
And you know, if he doesn't have anything on you, he'll make something up. He'll have people, even sometimes even brethren, make stuff up about you that isn't true to discredit what you're doing. Don't feel bad if it happens. I know what's happened to Pastor is. It's happened to me. I know what's happened to many of you. What's wrong with mom and dad? You know, they used to be so cool, and now they're into this God thing. Why can't you kids just be like everybody else and smoke dope and go out and party? I actually, that's true. I had that happen in my church. The kids come to me, what's wrong with my parents, you know? Well, that's the problem. They don't see their value. God redeemed us, and here's what's so important. He saved us for a reason. A reason. Wow. God doesn't waste. You ever notice how God, you ever look? Oh, I recycled. I, I come over here. I, 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 I don't know if I moved here or not. Did I move here? I think I did. I'm kind of in the process. I, I, I bought a house over in, it's not a house. <laughs> it, it's a foreclosure. Uh, and you know, it's been empty a while. It's been empty a while. And I remember I walked in and I looked at it. Bought it sight and seen. Don't ever do that. Um, and I walked in, and I go, you know, I used to live in a house like this, and then I got a job. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I found one thing good in houses, windows. <laughs> they're, they're, they're handy. Oh, this one doesn't have a window. Um, but that all aside, the, I don't even know where I go. I, I, don't you love my dirt trail, my bunny rabbit, can't reel and go off? But the point is, is that God puts us where he wants us for a reason. We're saved for a reason. Again, think about that for a minute. God doesn't waste. And because God doesn't waste, he's got a purpose for you. Now, here's the good news. What was lost in the garden? Preeminent. What was lost? <laughs> Fellowship with God. That's what was lost. That's where God broke communication with man when man began to take orders from the devil. Eat of the tree. God says, don't eat of the tree. Should I eat of the tree? Should I eat of the tree? Okay, we'll get this great. Okay, you broke fellowship with God. The first Adam sold us into slavery. The second Adam redeemed us from that slavery, Jesus Christ. Now, here's what's important. Because we belong to him, we have been restored. Now, this is why I think it's so important that we understand who we are in Christ. Again, because if you have any other thing in this world determine who you are, you're in trouble. In other words... If you don't live your life by every word that the Bible says, then what word then do you live by? The words in top 40 Christian rock songs? What the country western songs say? I don't know what everybody listens to over here. Well, I pray they listen to CSN, but that's good. <laughs> but the point is, if we let the world define for us, we miss who we are. Now, here's what's good. Paul says, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You have a Father in heaven who loves you. That's the treasure. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he did all these things. is so that you could spend eternity with him. Who's your daddy? You know, praise God today. And here's why that's so important. Because when God is your father, we then begin to realize that that's why Jesus, when he said, when you pray, pray in this manner, or pray in this blueprint. Our Father, which art in heaven, isn't it weird that the God who created everything that we see wants us to re relate to him, not as, oh God, in the farthest out cosmos, beyond the stars, I beseech thee, well, of course, always in 16th century King James English, I beseech thee, oh God. No, oh, God just simply says, talk to me, I mean. You know that whereby we cry, Abba, Father, will you just have your child crawl up in your lap and just say, Dad? You know, isn't it weird how man likes to junk up a relationship as simple as a father-child relationship with religion? Now go over and say 15 Hail Marys on it. You know, you know, oh man, I've got anything now. Our Father, we're talking about Go say 15 Hail Marys, go say 15 Our Fathers, and you'll, you'll be able to hook the phone line back up. That's not the way it works. Don't ever let any religion get between you and Daddy. Amen. 
Your Father in heaven loves you. He walked through a field, this dirty old Lord, found us all up to our necks in filth, went and paid the price. For God so loved the world, loved everybody. Well, God predestinated some people to go to hell. Really. God goes, this one's going to hell. <laughs> is that the way God is? Not the Bible I'm reading. God gave equal opportunity to every human being to either choose him or reject him. And that's the beauty of Christianity. You see, it isn't religion, friends. And I'll tell you, there's nothing that works against the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ more than religion. Now, understand this. Religion is man's attempt to reach God through rules, regulations, selling flowers at airports, wearing certain kind of clothes, uh, do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign, kind of thing. So what God says to us is, come unto me, all you are labor and heavy labor, all the rest. What do you need in your life today more than any other one thing? Do you know you can't respond well if you're burdened? Have you ever realized, have you ever had your kids coming in and, and you, you got something on fire in the kitchen on the stove and your kids are coming in, mommy, mommy, and there's blood running out of his nose, and you go, don't bother me now! Come back at a different time. You, I don't know if you notice this. We don't respell, respond well when we're under stress. We just don't. Come unto me, all you labor, heavy labor, all you do this. Well, God, I'll, I'll get right with you later. I'll get right with you later when I don't have so many problems going on. God says, you're never going to fix your problems without me. The way God fixes things is so different than we do. I remember I was down in Arizona three weeks ago. I was working on a house, and the gear on the top of the garage door opener broke. It snapped off. And I remember distinctly complaining to God about that. I felt a little bit like a Jonah over the plant that grew up, you know? Hey, cool plant. It died. Oh, that's okay. And... And it's broke. And I remember sitting there looking at it saying, if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. <laughs> Only to find out two weeks later my house broke, got broken into. And because that thing didn't work, I bolted the garage door shut and they couldn't get the stuff out. <laughs> and I go, you knew that, didn't you? <laughs> See, God knows what you need and what oftentimes appears to be a curse when you see in the eyes of the flesh you go this is bad there's no luck at all here when you see in the spirit you go God I don't know what you're doing but it's cool <coughs> letting God be God you are the treasure you're the treasure and always remember never let anything interfere between you and that simple, loving, father-child relationship with your daddy. You know, actions don't always speak of our heart. I've used the illustration before about two men, for instance, in a Hallmark store, buying their car to wife, buying, buying a card for their wife, <laughs> and there's two of them. I think that's what I mean. Um, <laughs> And you have two men standing there looking at all the cards. And they're going through them. And one man is there because he genuinely loves his wife. He wants to get his wife a great card. The other one's there because he knows if he doesn't get his wife a birthday card, he's going to be eating burnt toast for the next year. Now, somebody, a casual observer, would say, look, both those men love their wives. They're both getting them cards. But the motive of one is completely different than the other. We can have the right actions, but we can have the wrong heart. And one of the things that God always does is he goes to the heart. This morning, I just pray that the treasure that God sees, you, you see yourself as a redeemed child of God. If you see somebody else, as, as, yourself as a, oh, I failed, I've done this wrong, I've done that wrong. First of all, let me tell you, you have. Welcome to the call. All right, it's okay. It's okay. See, that's why Jesus died. And when we realize that God so loved the world that whosoever would believe in him 
would not perish but have everlasting life. Well, what about those Bible verses that say, well, to those he's predestined? Yeah, just because God knows in the end, in the end, who chooses him and who rejects him, doesn't mean that he's given every person on this earth the right to choose. This morning I pray one thing, and that's you choose Jesus. You need a relationship with him. Because the Bible says, without him, you are fatherless. You, you have not been adopted. You know where Paul says, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The word Abba means literally firstborn child. In other words, not like you're grafted in. Not like you're a, a stepson or a stepdaughter. It's like you're his real kid. I like that. I need to belong. And you see, the thing is, if you don't have a self you can live with, you're going to be suicidal. You're going to find something in this life that's going to be bigger than you. Oh, you might have the world by the tail right now. But the problem is, something in this life will show you, first of all, there is a God, and two, you're not him. That's the, that's the issues that we'll find. Remember, the second thing we need to realize, a reason to live for. What lights your fire? Well, you know, go out, got to go out and make the box, you know. That's what it was all about. You know, we're partying tonight. It's Friday night. I remember one time a guy asked me, true he said that party i went to the other night he was talking to his friend he goes did i have a good time i'm going <laughs> well let's just say the train is off the tracks here the thing is when we realize that that self you can live with is so important that reason to live for is so important what lights your fire do you realize you were put on this earth for a reason? You know, one of the real prayers that we pray when we become born again, it's become so mechanical. And I think the devil does this to God's word. By the way, the devil knows the Bible. Don't ever think he doesn't know the Bible. He quotes it to Jesus. Remember on the mount, Jesus had been fasting. Jesus comes down the mountain, and we remember Satan appeared to him and said, If you're God's son, put a slithery down. I Command this stone to be made bread. Well, Jesus could have turned the whole mountain to bread if he wanted to. But we remember that Jesus wasn't here to take orders from the devil. He came to redeem us, the treasure in the field. And we remember it got down to the last one, and it says he took him to the pinnacle of the temple, and he starts quoting to him out of the book of Psalms, cast yourself down. The angels will bear thee up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus rebukes him. Now, here's why that's important. Well, then why doesn't the devil just cry uncle and walk away? Pride is what blinds the devil from reality. Pride is what blinds people today. You go up to a person. I, I, I was sharing this with, with uh, Izzy. By the way, Izzy said something concerning this auntie that just passed this week. And his exact words, and I thought it was weird, and probably Izzy didn't even know I was I do that. He says, it's hard to imagine what the island will be like without her. Now, I, I, I'll tell you something. That, that's a pretty good statement. But when we realize that tomorrow's not promised to any one of us, I remember going up and seeing this guy in a hospital, and he had more, more tubes in him than the spaghetti factory. And, and I, I was going up to see him. I was asked to go up there. And the doctor's outside the door. And he goes, yeah, you might want to go in there and give him his last rites. He's about done. And I said, okay. So I go in there, and he's laying there. And I said, hey, and I called him by his name. I said, I said, you're getting ready to go on a journey. And I just want to be sure that you're ready for your journey. He goes, I'm not going anywhere. You know, when I get up out of this hospital bed in a couple of days, I'm going to go out and have me another family. And I'm going to do this. And I, I'm going, no! You don't know what condition you're in. Why? Pride blinds people to reality. That one day they're going to stand before God and give an account of their life, unless they're born again, in which at that time your attorney, Jesus Christ, will step out and say, I died for this person. He's clothed with my righteousness, and he is what allows he's going to be allowed to go into heaven because what I did for him. You better have that attorney. You better have a good attorney when you die. The Bible says he's our advocate. You need an advocate. You not only need somebody that loves you, Somebody that cares about you, somebody that relates to you as a father, but somebody then that will reach out to you your whole life in love.
That's what you need. And you say, well, God, if you really love me, why did this happen? I know so many people that get mad at God because something happens. And because we don't understand it with our little peanut brains, we get mad at the God who made that. And God goes, you just don't get it. Do Ain't you glad God loves us? Ain't you glad God didn't fry us when he should have? You think about it for a minute. You see, that's the forgiveness of God. See, we see things through our eyes. You can say, well, why, if, if God, if you really love me, why did you allow that to happen? God didn't allow that to happen. Something else much worse may have happened. We don't know. And you know, I think, you know, a lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God about this, that, the other thing. And where did that half inch wrench go that day? Oh, you got to be a mechanic to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I think when we get to heaven, we're going to be so overwhelmed. You know, the Bible says, it's really strange. It's a weird verse. You want a weird verse? I, I, get, I get questions all the time from all over the nation. And one of the weird questions that I get, and I'm not completely satisfied even with my answer. How many angels can sit on the head of a pin? No, that's not the question. <laughs> it's... Jesus wipes away in Revelation every tear from their eyes. What does that mean? Was it tears of remorse? God, it's so beautiful. You, I wish I would have done so much more for you than I did. Is that the tears? Tears of remorse? Is it tears that we finally made it to heaven and wow, God, it's all true, just like you said. God, that we get to see our, our family and our loved ones that loved you. They're in heaven with us. He wipes away every tear from our eyes. Hey, listen. This ain't all there is, friends. It's only the beginning. You know, part of your job, a reason to live for, is that you hand out those invitations. You know, I'm, I'm around people all the time. Everybody, one of us, you know, you might work at a body shop. You might work in a store. You always hear everybody cussing and swearing, go to hell, go to hell, go to hell. Let's go to heaven. <laughs> We're getting up quite a crowd. I think it's time we do something about that, you know? Go to heaven. Oh, by the way, don't waste some eyebrows in your shop if you say that. <laughs> but you know, when you do that, when you do that, you cause people to think in a different avenue than they thought before. A reason to live for. This morning, what is your reason to live for? And then, then finally, a faith to live by. Again, what do you believe? Because what you believe directly affects on how you live. If you live that, well, you know, uh, he with the most toys when he dies wins. Okay, why isn't there no U-Hauls behind hearses? Okay, question. If that's the point, if that's what you think, then that's why you live your life the way you do. See, you can't disconnect these things. The Bible says that we are created in the image of God. God is a triune being. In fact, interestingly enough, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. That speaks of a plurality of God. Now, the rest of the Bible tells us who this Elohim is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But you realize that we are created in God's image. You're a body, mind, and a spirit. If any one of those three things are amiss, you're going to be imbalanced in your life. Realize that? Why, why do people that have perfect health blow their brains out? Why do people that have all the money in the world blow their brains out? Because though they might have a healthy body, there's something deeply sick in their soul. You see, you're a body, mind, and spirit. You need a reason to live for, a self you can live with, and again, that faith to live by. This morning, if you're not born again, you need to be. And maybe you've been taking on too much of yourself. Maybe your God's too small. You know, a lot of people have a really small God. They have a really little God. God can't do that. God can't do that. Friends, God can do anything when you're in his will. Well, the Bible says whatever you ask in his name, he'll do it. Providing that's what God wants for you. But you know, when the Bible says that, here's what God will do. When he does that, it's to glorify him, bless you, and those around you. And this morning, if you've never received Christ as your Savior, or maybe you believe the lies of the world, there is no God. Oh, really? 
When somebody says that, then I say, well, you know then, what you've just told me, God is dirt to you. Well, I believe in the Big Bang. Well, then who lit the fuse, all right? <laughs> We're going to get back to basics here. Something doesn't come from nothing. Only God does that. And so this morning, if you're not born again, if you do not have that personal relationship with Jesus, I would do you the worst service in the world by not giving you an opportunity to receive Christ as your Savior. He loves you. He cares about you. The things that you think, well, God, if you really love me, you wouldn't let that happen. Let me just share this with you. God let it happen for a reason. God doesn't live in the immediate. He lives in eternity. That's why it says in Revelation 22, I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and last, all times present. I don't know anybody like that. Everything I know has a date. 57 Chevy. Milk expires in November 5th. And by the way, you all know about that because I know you go through the icebox looking for the, lo <laughs> the latest date. We're all aware of time. But see, the thing is, God lives in all times present. He knows more about tomorrow than you remember about yesterday. And this morning, I just want to invite you, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, we're going to pray right now. And um, if you've never received Christ, you can pray. You can say, okay, God, you win. I'm going to let you do what you want to do. I want you as my daddy. I want you to watch over me. Take out of my life the things that don't belong. Put in my life the things that do. I repent of the foolish way that I have lived. Now, what do I mean by that? Defining life your way. But where has it gotten you? Let me ask you a question. And I've asked this before. And I, I was in, in a group of people. And I, I was kind of at this point in, in the message. And I said, do you want another five years or 10 years like you just had? And this girl comes running down to the front of the and She goes, no! <laughs> and I'm amazed how many times we think it's going to keep getting better without God. It doesn't, friends. You can gain the whole world and lose your own soul. What does it profit you? So this morning, if you've never received Christ, I just pray that you'll pray this. It's just an invitational prayer where you can meet the God of all eternity. You can accept what Father did for you, and you can call him Daddy as well. He is your Father. You are his child. You are the treasure. He gave up all the worship of the angels, everything. S gave it all away to come down and redeem us. This morning, if you've never prayed, let's pray. Some of you saints might want to help them out. We'll just pray. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I invite you into my life today. I ask you to make me the best I can be for you. And from this day forward, I put my faith, hope, and trust in you. Yes. Forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. So now fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me. Fill me with love. And God, thank you for writing my name in your book of life that I can spend eternity with you. Yes, Lord. And I ask this now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.